Good morning. Good morning. And welcome. We welcome you. We welcome those at home who uh, will uh, join us by way of our DVDs and those who will be joining us on our website. Uh, I like to say everyone is welcome here. Otherwise, I wouldn't be welcome. So welcome to all of you. If you will, please uh, take a look at your yellow sheet, uh, kind of the road map of what's going to be happening uh, th uh, this week in our church. Uh, the first thing that will happen after our service this morning is the luncheon. Uh, it's a drive-through. There's no sit-down. It's not eat-in or take-out. It's all take-out. You don't have to leave your car. They have what they call runners. I think they're more like walkers who will walk up to your car with your order. Uh, tickets are available at the door, well, the gate, I guess you'd say. Um, so we have no more tickets to sell you, but uh, they're $12 each. We've already, we found out that they've already sold more tickets than last year, and it was a grand success last year. So please uh, go up there and it, it'll, you got to eat somewhere, okay? So help us out by doing that. <clears throat> There's a note uh, here, just uh, for, for general information, that we need greeters. And that's a very, very important uh, volunteer opportunity in our church. Uh, it, it warms people as they come in and to be warmly greeted and so forth. So we have a sign-up sheet outside the church office uh, if you uh, would like to enter that kind of ministry. Tomorrow evening is our monthly gathering of the Praying Church. And uh, it, we meet right here in the sanctuary for a, a very uh, quiet and, and uh, peaceful time of uh, meditation and reflection. We never ask anybody to pray aloud, and we certainly invite you to come. Uh, bring your prayer guide with you because we will be giving updates on people and praying for those who have asked us to pray for them. Having another game night on Friday evening, and uh, that's a lot of fun, right? Okay, that's the head gamer. Hold up your hand, let them <laughs> uh, have a, uh, I call that uh, the evening time saints alive. These are people that really are not available during the day, but they have the same kind of fun that, that they have at saints alive. We're very blessed today with the flowers on the altar given in loving memory of R.G. Hensley and Nola Hensley, given by their daughter, Sam Giles. We thank you for the flowers today. As you are able, I invite you to stand as we sing No Other Name. <laughs> the ages, Christians have gathered each week to worship God together. We gather to sing, to pray, and to rejoice. We gather to ask God for healing for our brokenness. We gather to help each other through hard times and celebrate in the good times. We gather to learn and study and discuss God's word. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessings. Let us sing praise to our Lord the Almighty King of creation. <laughs>
Almighty God, it is our privilege and our blessing to be here in your house once again, together as your people. We pray that you would grant to us unity, that you would grant to us love and cooperation, that you would give us today inspiration that we may go forth from here to serve you. We pray this in the name of Christ Jesus, who is our Lord and our Savior, and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. when we come to our mission moment, we're talking about uh, many things that we do that involve going outside of the four walls of the church or perhaps having others come in to be ministered to. Uh, it might be something here local. It might be as we, uh, our youth used to go up to the Eastern Shore, to the migrant camps up there, or Mission Fuge, or perhaps Haiti and other places. But there's also a mission just among us who are a part of the family. It might have, might have been 10 years ago. Uh, I know things happened, I just don't remember when, and it doesn't matter. I was going through the sanctuary through the week and I found one of these little white cards that someone had written a, a very desperate prayer. I don't think it's anybody that's that continuing to be a part of our church. And from the handwriting, I would guess it was a woman. Now, after I read this, let me explain the importance here. It says, please pray for me. Okay, we could all say that. I feel so empty. Like a void in my chest. Uh, yes, like a void in my chest, sucking everything out that is in me. Please, I'm tired of feeling empty. Now, if you'd seen this person that Sunday, you probably wouldn't have noticed anything particularly different, but we never know what's going on behind the facade of people. So my plea to you, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here, this choir, but also you as the choir as well, Let's be kind to people. Let's welcome them. Let's make them feel at home. Let's love them, and I'm gonna talk a little more about love later. We don't have to necessarily like them. We don't have to invite them home for lunch or go play golf or anything like, Bible never, never requires that. But we really need to be sensitive and open to people. Uh, and that's why I said that the, uh, the ministry of our greeters is so absolutely important. Because if you're on the, door, the outside doors, you're virtually the first person in the church that they have encountered. Or you perhaps may be at the inside door as well. But let's be gentle with each other. You know, life is not easy. There's so many ups and downs, and we all have our stories if we ever compile them. It would be a book that nobody would want to read. So that's my plea to you today, that we all be a missionary and we take care of each other. Thank you for your support of all of our missions and our ministries. Uh, it is our privilege and, and pleasure 
to worship God with our tithes and offerings.
probably would be appropriate if we said amen and went home after that story. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not going to happen. <laughs> Let's pray together. Oh, merciful God, your hand is always open to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us ever thankful for your loving providence and grant that we may be faithful stewards of your bounty. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Did you hear that? It's time for the Lambs Club. And we even put it in the bulletin what Lambs Club stands for, which is what? Living as my Bible says. Okay. All right. They left me a place to sit this week. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we don't want her behind me. We want her out. Okay, last week I gave each one of you a paper bag. And... Oh, for your brother. Oh, well. Did, did you... You got one, though, didn't you? All right. Okay. And, and the... The... the uh, the request was that you find a small stone, a leaf, a flower, that you hug someone, and that you smile at someone. Now, here's a, here's a question. You, you what? I like my daddy. You hugged your daddy? I like my daddy. Oh, you, he likes his daddy. Well, you know what? I like him too. No, you don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> now, who, who did you hug? Who did you hug? You hugged your mother, okay. You hugged your brother, okay. All right. Lily, who did you hug? My mama. My mama, she said. Oh, that's sweet. Okay. Who did you smile at? A random person, I guess. A random person, she said. Oh, that, that's a good one. Yeah, we got a lot of random people uh, running around here. Now... I'm not old enough to do this, so I had to have help from Mrs. Hallie. And she found a flower, okay? And she found a leaf. Well, it's getting a little wilted now, but this is just from last night. And a rock. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can have that. Just a little tiny rock. That was kind of an interesting little uh, exercise, wasn't it? to help out people and see if we can be aware of our surroundings and, and all the things that God has given us. Now, don't stop hugging and don't stop smiling, okay? Yep, she's practicing right here. Well, thank you, and, and you, you all can work on yours this week and see what we can come up with. Let's have our prayer, okay? No, I just want to hold your hand. Okay. Now, repeat after me. Here, I'll hold your hand, okay? Dear Jesus, we love you, and we thank you for loving us. Amen. Amen.
are those just words on a page that are set to a beautiful tune, or do we believe that in our heart? Surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. As we come to our prayer time, I do have some good news to share with you. Uh, Jim Mann is doing quite well. Uh, he's uh, more verbal now, more like the Jim Mann that we know and love. Uh, and he is uh, in progress in his rehab up at uh, Lake Taylor Hospital. Herbert Briggs dipped to a new low this past week, and it looked pretty grim. But he has uh, rallied from that, and now they're even talking about discharging him. Now, he probably will have to go to do some rehabilitation, uh, but he never did lose his sharpness of mind. And he's one of my favorite people to uh, talk to, uh, partly because he's complimentary, but uh, <laughs> come on, I, I can't help that part. But he just, a, just a, he and Jim both are just really, really great friends. So thank you for uh, praying for them as well as all who are on our prayer list. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, you alone are worthy of praise in all the earth. You are the creator of all things. You are the sustainer of all things. And you lift, look down and lift us up. And you have become our Savior as well. We give you our utmost praise and adoration. And Lord, when we do that, we realize how far short we fall of your glory how much we desperately need your love, your care, your, your lifting us up, your assistance. We again think of St. Paul who said of himself that he did things he shouldn't do and, and did not do things that he should. And we are like that as well. And we offer ourselves up, Lord, that you would forgive us and that you would set us on the right path of our life. Lord, we are so thankful for every gift. We take so much for granted. That seems to be just the human condition that we don't often enough stop and take stock. We kind of look at it backwards. We look at what we don't have when there is so much that we do have. And Lord, you didn't give us all of that just to admire and to put in our pocket or up on a shelf to admire but you gave it to us that we can be the channel by which others can be blessed as well. So help us to see all of these blessings that you've given us as things that ought to be shared. And we don't lose a thing when we share them. We gain so much more. So help us, Lord, to always be on the lookout for ways of taking your blessings and sharing them with others. Our Father, we thank you for our weekly prayer guide. We thank you for the instruction that we get from it. We thank you for reminding us of the illnesses and the uh, situations that are, are around us. And we pray that in every case, Lord, that you would go into the lives and the families of these precious people and that you would apply your will and your blessings upon them. And let them know that surely goodness and mercy will follow them all the days of their lives. Our Father, we gather all of this up together as your people. We pray it because the Holy Spirit gives us strength. And because of the life-giving blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
another place we could end, right? My, my, that was wonderful. I forgot to uh, mention about Faith Weaver Friends this afternoon. Uh, do you have any details, or is everything in the uh, yellow insert here? Um, it's kind of like a mini VBS, and we're going to try to do it maybe every other Sunday. Um, and we'll just have a good time. They'll earn little keys. And today, one of the things that we're going to do is write um, little mini letters to our firefighters in the city. Well, very good. Faith, we uh, had that ministry uh, in some time in the past, and uh, we thought it was a good one to bring back. Um, <clears throat> my study materials that I was going to use in this series of sermons, uh, the five things that every Christian needs to grow in God's grace. So I'm not prepared to start that today. And I had such a beautiful uh, um, what, picture. <laughs> the, the word is escaping me. But anyway, we will, we will pick that up next week. So I went back uh, to think about something that uh, all of us know about is probably one of our favorite subjects. Then my Ruritan magazine arrived, I think Thursday or Friday. I opened the first uh, cover and it, I was reminded that ministers try to be helpful in every case, but sometimes we need a little guidance. A clergyman was walking down a country lane and sees a young farmer struggling to load hay back onto the cart after it had fallen. You look hot, son, the minister said. Why don't you rest a moment, and I'll give you a hand. No thanks, the young man said. My father wouldn't like it. Oh, don't be silly, he said. Everyone is entitled to a break. Come and have a drink of water. Again, the young man protested that his father would be upset. Now, this is all, uh, very rare for a minister, but losing his patience. <laughs> the minister said, your father must be a real slave driver. Tell me where I can find him, and I'll give him a piece of my mind. Well, said the young farmer, he's down there under that load of hay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to read the great love chapter, the great love essay uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And it really starts the last phrase of the last verse of the previous chapter. When Paul says, now I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love I am nothing if I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love I gain nothing love is patient Love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall know, we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then 
I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. May the Lord bless our reading of his holy word. And to his name be honor and glory. Amen. Perhaps some of you who like um, popular, popular music are ahead of me and in your, in your mind you're hearing the strains of what is this thing called love? written by Cole Porter in 1929. And to me, it's, it's just as up to date now as it was the day that he uh, first performed it. Ask the Lord in heaven above, what is this thing called love? Love seems to be everywhere, doesn't it? We love strawberries. We love certain cities. We love our college football team, don't we, some of you? <laughs> And we especially love, love, love them when they win. We love our boyfriend or girlfriend. And we even sing, my Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine. And if you read the New Testament at all, you discover over and over that we Christians are called to be people of love. In fact, Jesus said the sign of our discipleship is whether or not we love each other. Paul told the Roman church that we must not owe anything to other people except the debt of love. He told the Galatians about the fruit of the Spirit. It, the, the word fruit, that's singular, but there were seven of them, and the first one of those was love. And then in this passage from 1 Corinthians 13, Paul says, that it is good to exercise your gifts. Without these gifts, and if you, if you exercise them without love, it's just an exercise in futility. It's nothing, no matter how impressive your sacrifices might be, whether you're sacrificing money or even your own self, if it's not done with love, it just is simply no good. So that is a pretty good, important question. What is this thing called love? Now, the people of the first century, when these uh, books were written, uh, may have been just as confused as we are about love. Now, we have one word, love, and we apply that to everything. I love a good steak. I love my wife. I love God. You know, on and on and on. And now, in our mind, we know the distinction, but the Greeks actually had different words that would apply to different types of love. Um, now, for example, the most common word that they would have used, and Greek at that time was the universal language. That's why uh, the, uh, uh, the original manuscripts of the New Testament were written in Greek and not Latin, even though the Romans uh, had control of Israel. But the most common word they would use is the word phileo, P-H-I-L-E-O. Now that word was kind of the everyday word for love. It's the wor uh, it describes the uh, uh, love that you have for your friends, for your family, for your country. Now there was another word that was uh, very common in the ancient world, word for love, and that was the word eros, E-R-O-S. And we derived our English word erotic from that. Now, the ancient Greeks used this word in a, in a much wider sense, uh, such as the feeling that you would get in a very moving moment of your life. Maybe you're watching a film somewhere, and it's the, the, uh, uh, the dialogue and, and the plot that's going forth, it just moves you in your heart. The, the Greeks would have said, well, that's eros working in your life. It would be a moment, for example, uh, and this is a tribute to a young man who grew up near here. Um, when you stand at Niagara Falls and see the just millions of gallons of water cascading all, it just does something to you. That's eros, they would say. Or if you witnessed a stirring performance of Handel's Messiah, or if you were here today and heard all of this stirring music that has come from our music ministry. We thank you so much. 
Eros is that rush of feeling when you're moved by some beauty or masterpiece. We love those moments. Our, our culture puts, our current culture puts a lot of emphasis on that uh, kind of love, just like the Greeks did. But here's the thing. The word eros does not appear anywhere in the New Testament. So if you ask Paul the question, what is this thing called love? He would use yet a third Greek word, and that's the word agape, A-G-A-P-E. Now there's a strange thing about this word agape. It is seldom used outside the Bible. Now somebody, and I'm sure it was in a, in a pre-computer age, spent evidently hours and days and weeks poring over all the ancient books and manuscripts and so forth, looking for various things, not, not just the word agape. They only found four uses of that word in, in print or in handwriting outside the Bible. And, if, and when, it, when it was used that way, it was translated some, something like goodwill. But in the Bible, it becomes a major, major word. It's a word that's used to describe God's love for us, our love for God, and our love for each other. And get this, what characterizes this kind of love has nothing to do with emotion. Now, when I learned that some years back, I couldn't believe that. What do you mean? Love with no emotion? It doesn't fit. Well, in biblical use, agape love is a setting of the mind and an orientation of the will toward another person. It's a determination that we will seek only the highest good for other people. That's why Jesus was able to say in the Sermon on the Mount, love your enemies. That doesn't make sense. You're supposed to hate your enemies. You're supposed to do all you can to destroy them. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. Love your enemies. Do good to those who persecute you. Now, I've told the early service, and I've used this illustration, Christians really don't fit in our culture. Because our culture is going a certain way, and all cultures go a certain way. It's the way of uh, amassing all you can, get, as uh, someone said one time, get all you can and can all you get. Whether by, you know, legal or not so legal means. Uh, get the other guy before he gets you. Uh, kick and scream your way to the top. That's, that's really what you would learn if, if all you did was learn from our modern culture. But it's almost like Christians are going against the grain all the time. I know there are people out in the world, they think we're the biggest fools that, that ever lived, spouting all of this stuff off to love your enemies. The German philosopher... Immanuel Kant, who lived in the 1700s, he totally dismissed this idea. He said, it is impossible to command other people to love. And actually, he was right in one sense, because if you're talking about the kind of love attached to a feeling, that would be phileo or eros, you can't command that. But what he was commanding, Jesus was commanding us to do, is not about feelings. It's about a setting of the mind. And Jesus said, I'm commanding you to have this kind of agape. Now, if we have that kind of love, it doesn't mean you have to like them. It doesn't mean you have to become their pal or go to lunch with them or do business with them. Or, in fact, you may de detest them as a human being. And I know that sounds like a, a contradiction, but again, having agape love means I will do only what is in your best interest. I will only seek your highest good. So St. Paul helps us 
to define agape by describing it and showing how it acts. Love is patient and kind. In love, there's no envy, no boasting, no pride. And I want to put a little footnote on the word being proud. There are two ways to be proud. Uh, if your child accomplishes something, uh, to say that you're not proud means that you don't have any feeling in your heart. Of course you're proud. But there's that kind of pride that says, I'm good and you're not. I'm on the top of the heap. That's the kind of pride that Paul is talking about. Love isn't rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. Now notice it doesn't say there's no anger because Paul knows that we're humans, but, but it takes just a whole lot more to anger us. Here's a good one. It keeps no record of wrong. Any of you married folks ever have an argument with your spouse? I, I'm seeing heads going no. <laughs> Did you ever, in one of those arguments, go back and say, you're always doing whatever? Paul says, that's not love. That's not love. Love doesn't delight in evil but it rejoices with the truth, it always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, and always perseveres. That's the kind of love that St. Paul is encouraging us. By the way, I have to throw this in, doesn't necessarily fit right now, but one, one writer said about patience, you know, the famous prayer, Lord, give me patience now, so one writer put it this way, patience is a virtue, possess it if you can, found seldom in a woman, but always in a man. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I said the wrong one, never in a man, I don't, I, my eyes deceive me. <laughs> let's, let's rewind the tape and let me say it again, patience is a virtue, Possess it if you can, found seldom in a woman, never in a man. Amen to that. Let's go forth. Let's be the people of God. Let's live our faith. Let's, let's put all this to the test. We, we don't know if it's the right way to live until we live that way. When we do. When we do, we certainly will be a great witness to our Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Our Father, help us to love, not selfishly or with ulter ulter ulterior motive, but honestly and openly with patience and kindness. May our church family be a haven of love. May we be a place where others are accepted and valued and loved. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, who loved us enough to give his life for us. Amen.